Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about osteoporosis. Now, osteoporosis is a disease where the bone density and quality are reduced. And the word osteoporosis literally means porous bone. So it's a disease where the body either loses too much bone, makes too little bone, or both. The incidence of osteoporosis is extremely high, affecting over 200 million women. And it affects about one of 10 women age 60, one out of five women age 70, two out of five women aged 80, and two out of three women aged 90. So first, we have to think of the bone as a living tissue. It's not a static tissue as we might think, but instead the bone is in a constant state of flux and it's constantly being remodeled where the body is continually replacing old bone with new bone. So <clears throat> as we go through the day, we might form little tiny microfractures in the bone, but there are different types of bone cells which help in the repair process. And the first type of bone cell is called an osteoclast, which is from the Greek words for bone and broken. This type of bone cell breaks down the bone, disassembling and digesting the protein and the mineral of the bone at a molecular deep level in a process known as bone resorption. And the second type of bone cell is called the osteoblast, also from the Greek meaning bone and germinate. So the osteoblast synthesizes special proteins and collagen in the areas recently broken down by the osteoclast, which then will eventually become strong mineralized bone. Thus, these two special bone cells build up the bones. So there has to be a balance between the amount of bone being broken down by the osteoclast and the new bone formation created by the osteoblast. <clears throat> now, if the bone breaks down more quickly than it's formed from either increased resorption, decreased formation, or a combination of the two, then osteoporosis will result. Now, at any one moment, 2-5% to of your skeleton is being remodeled, and at any point in time, there are millions of these tiny areas of bone undergoing active repair in your body. The osteoclastic reabsorption phase of remodeling lasts for three to five weeks, and the osteoblastic bone formation and remineralization phase takes another three to five months to complete. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of the common causes of osteoporosis. First, there's chronic low-level inflammation. That's one of the main causes at a very deep level of bone loss. The body responds with acute inflammation always if there's an injury or an infection. But when this inflammatory process continues on for months or even years, instead of being reparative, the immune system becomes unbalanced and can become destructive to the body. Now, factors which cause inflammation could be from lack of friendly bacteria in the gut, which allows for chronic gut infections to grow, like candida albicans yeast, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, parasites, and bacterial overgrowth in the large intestines. These friendly bacteria can become depleted through the use of many types of pharmaceuticals <clears throat> like antibiotics, steroids, acid reflux medicines, birth control pills, and immunizations. Once the friendly bacteria is depleted, chronic infection can occur, and along with it, the chronic inflammation and that's because inflammation is always the byproduct of the immune system attacking the infective agents. <clears throat> Another cause of chronic inflammation comes from overheating of the liver. Nowadays, with the 80,000 environmental toxins combined with the dietary toxins create a huge amount of toxicity in the liver, which causes it to overheat because these hot acidic toxins are filtered through it every minute of the day and night. The liver also converts the blood plasma to blood, which causes then the blood to overheat as well, which actually means that the heat in the liver spills out into the entire body as the liver heats up the blood as it undergoes this transformation. <clears throat> and now the heat is dispensed throughout the entire body, also leading to chronic inflammation. Now the blood becomes too acidic and hot, causing the bones to give up their calcium to alkalinize the blood. 
And here's another very important and often overlooked factor contributing to osteoporosis. Keep in mind that the osteoblast and the osteoclast are made in the bone marrow. Nowadays, many of the environmental toxins like air pollution and pesticides, many pharmaceuticals like immunizations and other medications settle in the bone marrow. So here's where the problem lies. When there's either chronic inflammation or toxins in the bone marrow, the stem cells in the bone marrow mistakenly start to make more osteoclasts which again are the bone cells which break down the bones and it results in too much bone loss and not enough bone growth. Now another cause of osteoporosis could be from oxidation of fats in the blood. These oxidized fats come from cooking with refined vegetable oils and these types of toxic fats that form when you heat these dangerous oils <clears throat> divert the stem cells away from osteoblast formation and more towards fat cell formation. And the ancient doctors of Ayurveda cognized this issue as well. They stated in their textbooks that each of the seven tissues, which are the blood plasma, the blood, muscle, fat, bone, bone marrow, and reproductive fluids, these seven tissues transform into the next tissue. So for example, the blood tissue undergoes a transformation and eventually becomes the muscle tissue. Now this is really interesting. The fat tissue transforms into the bone tissue. <clears throat> so the ancient text stated that it's important to have good quality fat in order to form strong bones. But the oxidized fats sitting in the fat tissue form a poor quality fat tissue giving rise to poor quality bone tissue. <clears throat> and here's some of the other causes of osteoporosis. One is hormonal imbalances. Both low estrogen and thyroid problems contrib contribute to bone loss. High vada can emaciate the bones, and vada in our bodies is aggravated by rushing through the day, eating a diet low in fats or milk, going to bed late, and lots of stress. But inactivity, on the other hand, can also deplete the bones. When you exercise on a regular basis, your bone adapts by building more bone and becoming denser. Also, smoking reduces the blood supply to the bones, and the nicotine in the cigarettes slow up the production of the bone-producing cells, or the osteoblast. And smoking also decreases the body's absorption of calcium. Insufficient intake of milk and or poor quality of milk can cause osteoporosis, and that's because milk is the number one best food for the bones, but it has to be taken in the correct way. And we want the full fat milk because it's the fat in the milk that delivers the calcium into the bones. If you drink low fat milk or skim milk, it won't nourish the bones enough because the calcium comes in one end and out the other end, never absorbing in the bones. Low levels of vitamin D can also cause osteoporosis. Most of us don't get out in the sun enough or we live in areas where there's lack of sunlight for a large part of the year. Vitamin D helps the absorption of calcium into the bones, and it's usually running low in just about every one of us. <clears throat> and again, poor quality fats in the diet cause weak bones, while a diet with good fats like ghee, olive oil, whole milk, yogurt, soft curd cheeses, avocados, nuts and seeds will form very strong bones. Too much alcohol intake can slow bone formation and speed up bone breakdown. And the acids in coffee also contribute to bone loss because again, the bones have to give up their calcium to keep the blood alkaline. The phosphoric acid in the sodas interferes with calcium absorption and results in the loss of calcium from the bones. So how can we prevent and or treat osteoporosis? Well, the standard medical treatment years ago was to give hormone replacement therapy which is called HRT. But this type of therapy was pretty much discontinued after this really huge 15-year research program called the Women's Health Initiative demonstrated that the HRT, the hormone replacement therapy, caused an increased risk of heart attacks, strokes, blood clots, breast cancer, and colorectal cancer. So nowadays, the most common form of bone medication is known as the bisphosphonates. These medicines poison the osteoclasts, 
allowing unnatural bone formation as the, as the osteoblasts build up the bone out of balance with, with what nature had intended. And this causes very brittle bones, which tend to snap and break easily. Even the larger bones in the body, like the femur, if you just bend over, they could just snap and break because they become so brittle on those medicines. And it's also been found to cause necrosis, which means death of the bone cells in the jawbone. <clears throat> Many people who took those medicines had their jawbone actually disintegrate, which was very painful, causing a lot of suicides because they couldn't handle the pain. Now in Ayurveda, we give herbal remedies and formulations which help the body make its own estrogen and progesterone, and they don't have the serious side effects of the synthetically made hormone replacement therapy. The first thing most people think when they hear they have osteoporosis though, is to take a calcium supplement. But even without microscopes, the ancient doctors knew that the calcium molecule was very large and couldn't be absorbed into the bones. So they recommended burning the calcium which they took from the ocean, usually in the form of coral, or maybe sometimes snail shells and pearls. And they repeatedly burn it for several weeks, causing the calcium molecules to become smaller and smaller with each incineration. The end product is called a bosma of the calcium, and it's actually a very tiny nanoparticle, which can be absorbed easily into the bone. Research has shown that most of the calcium products on the market are in fact too large for absorption. They never reach the bone and instead they get stuck in the arteries, causing hardening of the arteries and plaque formation. That's why taking calcium supplements has never helped bone formation. I remember it when my teacher, Vaidra Mishra, used to take the pulses of people who were taking just the standard calcium supplements. He would turn to me and say, you know, in every patient who takes calcium supplements, I can feel in their pulse the calcium is stuck in the arteries, clogging them, and it's not getting to where it's needed in the bone. And sure enough, research has now demonstrated this. Now, many people are also deficient in magnesium since it gets depleted when you're under lots of stress and virtually every pharmaceutical will flush magnesium out of your body. So in my practice, we give transdermal magnesium therapies through the use of transdermal magnesium creams, and Abhyanga oils made with magnesium, which are used for full body oil massage. The skin absorbs the exact amount of magnesium which it needs, and many times when you take magnesium orally, it goes through the digestive tract too quickly and can cause diarrhea, and along the way it prevents its absorption. We also recommend getting vitamin D mainly through sunshine and also through transdermal use, which means topically on the skin. Keep in mind that the darker the skin, the more sunlight you need to make vitamin D because the pigment in the skin acts like a sunscreen. So a fairer skinned person might get by with about 15 minutes of sunlight a day, but a dark skinned person might need about a half hour or more in the sun to make the same amount of vitamin D. Now we have a very special herb from India known as Asti Shrinkala. Asti in Sanskrit means bone. And the best news of all, is that we have herbs and foods which can clean the bone marrow, allowing normal formation of both the osteoblast and osteoclast. We recommend use of good quality grass-fed, non-homogenized whole milk taken in the correct way, which means boiled for best absorption into the cells, and taken either with grains or by itself. Goat's milk can be taken if someone is allergic to cow's milk, and homemade almond, milk or macadamia nut milk, oat milk are also good substitutes. Toasted and ground sesame seeds are also very nourishing to the bones and can be sprinkled on foods. Vitamin K2 helps calcium stay away from the arteries and joints and directs it into the teeth and bones where it's supposed to go. Vitamin K2 though is extremely rare in the diet, but it is found in ghee or clarified butter. So don't be afraid to use it in your diet because ghee can't clog your arteries and it's a very high quality fat which will in turn create very high quality bone tissue. We don't want to take the synthetically made vitamin K2 supplements because they may cause some side effects. And as usual, the ancient doctors were correct when they stated that any disease process 
could be traced back to faulty digestion. And this is definitely the case with osteoporosis. The inflammation and infection that we see nowadays is caused a lot by problems with the two most important areas of the body responsible for good digestion and assimilation of nutrients. That would be the friendly bacteria in the gut and the liver. Pretty much everyone has issues with both. So by regrowing the friendly bacteria, cleaning and cooling the liver, the chronic inflammation and infection stemming from the digestive system go way down, allowing for better bone formation. Also, try to exercise for about a half hour, four days a week to increase your bone density. And of course, try giving up your bad habits of going to bed late, drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes. Limiting your intake of acidic coffee and sodas will dramatically help your bone health as you turn more towards good mineral rich alkaline spring water taken directly from the earth. So I hope you learned some important information about your bone health so that you don't have to suffer the consequences of bone loss that are so prevalent in our society today. Thank you.